Hey guys, welcome back. In the 10th lesson of the official Bolt series, we're going to continue working on our enemies. So we currently have an enemy walking back and forth, just kind of patrolling, looking around, doing his own thing. But what I want to do is I want to make sure he doesn't walk off the edge, right? Once he gets to the edge, we want to detect that and go the other direction. And to do that, we're going to repurpose our ground check macro because currently it does most of the stuff we want. It sends a ray down to see if the ground is below us. If it is, we know it is. Cool, but what I wanna do with that is I wanna add a couple of extra parameters. I wanna know if we are nearing the edge, right? So I wanna be able to set an offset to the cast. Currently it's casting directly down the center of the player, but I wanna cast it out in front of the player and then down, so we'll add an offset to that. So to do this, I'm gonna add an input unit here. And on input, we're going to have a value input for offset. Now this is gonna be the direction that we're offsetting the cast in, and the type is going to be a vector two. That's because we're gonna be passing in, it's this far out of an offset. And all we're gonna be doing is adding it to the actual player position. So take one vector, add it to another vector, and then you have the offset plus the position. And we're gonna make sure all these have a default value. Let's add another value here. And we're just going to make sure that we can also set the radius. No reason, just why not make it, uh, make it more dynamic. This will be a float value, has default value. And then we could do the distance as well. Just make it a bit more dynamic so we can use it for other things. And it's a float with a default value. And what I wanna do is take this offset vector and add it to my position vector. So if I, end that connection there. I want to take this and I want to say add. And I want to add vector twos together. So it's like the vector two version of add. And I'm going to pass in vector three and vector two. So A plus B is equal to our new position for the cast. Now, if we passed in no offset, so zero, zero, which is what we'll do for the jumping check, then this will be the same as it was before. Pass it into origin. Take the radius, pass it into the radius field and take the distance and pass it into distance. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I have a default value set for radius and distance so I don't have to define that on my ground check. So default value for radius was 0.4 and distance was 1.1, and there we go. And now I wanna use this as a super unit to check to see if the enemy has reached the edge. So I add a new macro here, bolt flow macro, and call it enemy reached edge. And what this is going to do is allow us to transition from left to right or right to left if we have reached the edge. So if we are going to the left currently and we reach the edge, then we should transition to the right movement. If we're going to the right and we reach the edge, we should transition back to the left movement. So to do that in my enemy reached edge, I will use my ground check super unit here that now allows me to define an offset, a radius, and a distance. And I know I want this to be able to trigger the transition if a couple of things are true. So what I wanna do is say trigger state transition because this is going to act as a transition from left to right. And that is walk left and walk right. So for this, we'll add a branch and we'll say if we are in fact not grounded, then I wanna trigger the transition. So if that check found where the edge was, in this case, this is not true, we're not grounded, and at least we're, not, we're about to not be grounded, then I want to trigger the transition. And I wanna do this every frame we're gonna check for that. So update event, do all that. But notice I'm not setting an offset here because I have to know which side of the enemy to put the offset on, right? So if we're walking to the left, it'll be on the left side of the enemy. Walking to the right, it'll be on the right side of the enemy. So I have to first of all, calculate the offset and then I'll set the offset to be whatever we find out it is. So to do that, I have to get the direction that the enemy is walking in. And one way I can do that is get the local scale of the enemy. So if he is looking to the left, that means he's walking left. If he's looking to the right, that means he's walking right, right? So I can use that. I'll say add unit, get local scale. So we know negative one on the X is walking to the left and positive one on the X is walking to the right. So I have to get the X value, so get X. But what that'll do is that'll put me an entire unit off to the left or to the right. 
which might be a little far, right? They might be checking a little too far ahead. So if we think about a unit, it could be checking out to right here. And I don't want that to trigger the transition. I want it to be about right here. So we're going to do about half of a unit. So I'll take the X and I will multiply it by 0.5. So if we have a full unit, now we have half a unit. Then I want to take that and create a vector two from it so we can actually use it as an offset. So this is just going to be the X value. The Y value will still be zero. So still the center of the enemy, but the X value will be whatever the offset is. So I'll drag this out and I'll say create vector two, just like that. And the Y value will still be zero. And now all I have to do is take this value that we just calculated and pass it in as the offset. So I'll just take the vector two out into the vector two in. And I'll take this and drag it up to the side here. That's all we need for that. But now this is a transition. So we have to actually use this to transition from the left state to the right state. So we'll come back out here and I will go to my enemy into alive, into patrol and from walk left to walk right. And then walk right to walk left. We'll have a transition. So I'm gonna hold down control key and drag from walk left to walk right. And then from walk right to walk left. So now to set the transition, I will again set the source as macro switch, and I'll choose my source for the transition. In this case, enemy reached edge. So whatever direction we're going in, it will detect that's the offset. And then if we're walking to the right, the offset will be off to the right of the enemy. If the ground check gets to the end of the platform and it no longer finds a ground, then it will trigger the transition and it will go in the opposite direction. So we'll do that for both of these. Macro, switch, enemy reached edge. There we go. So now we have an entire system set up to allow our enemy to walk left and right, idle, and not fall off a platform. We think. So let's see what happens if we play the game. And there he is, walking back and forth. He gets to the edge, he changes his mind, he goes the other direction. Sometimes he decides to idle. Sometimes he decides to switch directions in between the platform. So with enemies selected, we go into patrol, we can see exactly what's happening and when. Pretty cool. So now what I wanna do is once the player gets close to the enemy, I want to go into chase mode. So if we go into live here, we have chase which means the enemy should then chase the player. And to do that, all we have to do is calculate the direction the player is in regards to the enemy. And then we can also check to see, are you this close to me? Are you close enough for me to chase you? So we can add like a vision distance to our enemy. So on enemy, what I'll do is I'll add an object variable and I will call it detection. And this will be a float value. So now within our chase state, I will need none of the default events, get rid of those. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the direction vector between the player and the enemy. And the way you do that with simple vector math is you take the target and you subtract it from the starting position, right? So in our case, the target is the player and the starting position is the enemy. So take the player's position and subtract from that the enemy's position. And the resulting vector is your direction vector. And we'll use that to grab the X value to say this is the movement direction you take. So I'll say get application variable. I want the player variable. We know we have that reference set up. And from him, I want to get the position. So get position, transform, get position. And then I also need the enemy's position. So I'll say get position on self. And then I want to subtract from the player the enemy's position. So I'll say subtract. I want to do subtract on a vector three or vector two is fine. And then from a subtract B. And from that, I have to get the direction the enemy should walk in. So all we need is the X value. So I'll say get X again. You can see once you learn how bolt works, it's very quick and easy to get stuff working. And then I want to pass this in to a super unit that we created. So go back out here and it's going to be enemy movement pass that in. So that's the direction the enemy should move in based on where the player is located. But now what we have to do is actually set up the transition from patrol to chase and then from chase back to patrol. So we'll do this in this transition right here. Open that up. Now in this transition, what we have to do is take the position of the player and the position of the enemy and get the distance between those two positions to see if the distance is 
less than, greater than, or equal to the detection distance that the enemy has. Pretty much to see if we're close enough for the enemy to start chasing, right? So what we'll do for that is again, I have to get the player's position. So I'll say get application variable and it's called player. And again, get the position. So get position. And then the position of the enemy, get position. And I want to get the distance between these two vectors. Drag this out and then I'll say distance, vector two distance A and B. And this takes two vector twos in and gives you back the difference in a float value. So I'll just pass it in my two vector twos and the distance will be in a float value. So what I wanna do is see, is this less than the enemy's detection distance? So I'll say less than get detection. So are we close enough based on the distance between our two vectors to start chasing the player? If we are, pass this into a branch and say true. And we'll do this every single frame. Right into the branch. There we go. So back into a live. Now if the enemy is within detection distance of the player, we will initiate the chase state. Now to get back to patrol from chase, what I wanna do is the exact opposite of what we just did. So we come back in here, I'm just gonna copy all this and I wanna go back into this transition, delete that and I'm going to paste that in. Now what I wanna do is see, are we too far away? Should we stop chasing? So to do that, I'm gonna right click and click replace on less and then say greater than or equal to. So are we greater or equal to the distance. If we are, we're too far away, so we should stop chasing and go back to patrol. Back into a live. That's what you have. Pretty cool. So for the detection distance, we're going to say uh, three units. You can be within three units. He'll start chasing you. And I'm going to apply that. And now we can test out our chase mechanic. So if we go back into our patrol here. We can see that it's working just fine. But let's go back out to a live here and we'll see if we can trigger these transitions to happen. So let me get up here with him. He starts chasing me, but then he detects the edge and stops walking, goes back to idle and falls straight down and starts going crazy because he's trying to chase me. Get out of the distance of him and he stops. So what we want to do, he's having some issues down there because there's no, there's no uh, platforms. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that if he's chasing me, he won't just fall off a platform to get me. Make sure he'll stop at the platform and stop chasing me. So let's do that. So all we have to do for this to happen is from chase to patrol, we will just transition based on if we reach the edge or not. So I'll just add another transition from chase to patrol. And what this will be is another macro that will take our enemy reached edge. So if we reach the edge, go back to patrolling. And he stopped. Pretty cool. And that is it for the enemy system, right? We can actually let him patrol around on a platform now. He'll chase us, he'll deal damage to us. He can even kill us. A lot of cool stuff done in this lesson. But it was quite a whopper, so I hope you learned something and hope you're looking forward to more. So in the next lesson, we're gonna set up the projectile attack. So we're gonna be able to shoot out a little boomerang that's going to just go forward and kill any enemies it hits. And we have to collect this boomerang from our game world. Notice our little symbol right here. It's going to be our projectile attack that we can throw out and deal damage to our enemies. That is in the next lesson, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you there.